All right, Wayne D here again, and we're looking at the loser of last week's playoff, Robert Garrigus. And if you notice on the right side, you'll see a non-golfer that's uh, none other than Barry Bonds, the greatest home run hitter of all time. So what we're going to look at, and we'll look at Robert's full swing in a minute, because it's pretty interesting, as are all good swings. At least that's probably why you're watching, because it's interesting. But what I wanted to show you is some of the similarities in Garrigus's swing, and he's the longest hitter on the PGA Tour, which, amongst other things, probably means that he is the most controlled power hitter that we have because in order to be on the tour you have to be able to control your ball somewhat can't just launch it all over the place so uh, I'm gonna do a video on Jamie Sadlowski I got some good swings of him they had a driving contest in this tournament that uh, Sadlowski won fairly handily but it would be pretty evident why he would never be able to play the tour unless he modified his action a little bit, which he probably wouldn't want to do, considering he's the best at what he does, which is, you know, hit the ball 400 yards in the air. Anyway, so a couple things we can see here. This isn't a very good camera angle. Um, if you're stuck watching the Golf Channel on the telecast, which uh, we were this week, you, you really won't find very many good camera angles. They have just a tendency to get the cameras positioned, at least not for what I'm doing, but we'll do the best we can, so don't write in and say these camera angles aren't any good. We're just doing the best we can, and we'll comment on what we can. So a couple things are pretty evident here. Uh, one is that he's got a pretty conventional load into the right side, so he is definitely moving off the ball here. And the other thing that we'll notice right away is the use of the ground and the compression into the ground. So we've got it down to about here. So you know that's probably that's about three inches down as he as he gets into the launch mode here. And then when he wants to go forward, notice how he'll hit the ground. Now, right now, when he achieves full lowering here, his hands are way, way up there. So he's producing a, a tremendous amount of torque. Look at the big left lat muscle there. Just massive. I mean, it's a big guy. And he is really using his body and the ground to full effect. He doesn't have a hugely long swing, if you'll note. Um, his wrists are fairly firm at the top. And it's probably one of the reasons why he can manage to keep the ball in play and... When it comes to short irons, he can control the ball and flight it. Now, this is kind of an interesting move. A lot of guys you would see the right leg would drive inward more initially, and the right heel wouldn't lift so fast. So if you watch the heel, it's going to come more up. But note the head movement. Look at that head turn. So reminiscent of Dustin Johnson and David Duvall and other power hitters to let the head and neck flow with the chest and open up. So I'd say he's probably this way. Now the right eye can probably still see the ball, but look how open that is and the right foot still driving inward once he gets that that full rotation. Notice what he needs when that right leg pivots like that. You need a, a quick move to the left heel, and he gets that by fully rotating upper and lower immediately. So the club is dropping, and we'll see from the behind view that he comes in with a fairly high approach, and it's a fairly late release for a driver. So he actually produces a sustained shaft left arm position past the ball. 
and you got to have some serious club head speed to do that and launch it because that's going to deal off the face. So that's where these new drivers and the, and the technology that allows these guys to measure launch angle and, and uh, spin comes into play because it's really allowing guys not to have to add loft to the club as they hit the ball. Now, this is pretty damn cool. So if you watch Barry Bonds, I'm going to... One of the things that was interesting, I was watching some video on Bonds' swing, and this position of his hands is really different and not conventional for most baseball players. The dropping, how low his hands are here, means that they're going to have to go back up and the bat's going to have to cock somewhat. So hitting instructors would probably not teach that. They would teach the hands to stay up by the shoulder. But what I'm going to do here, since this is a fixed camera. So I'm just going to draw some lines on his head and his hips and we're going to kind of look at it like a golf swing. So you'll notice that in a baseball swing one of the things that I explain to people, I, I try to use the analogy of baseball and golf because of the because of the sequence of the motion and the rotation involved in the forward swing but of course, the biggest difference in baseball and golf is the ability to take the left foot from where it is here and stride, you know, about two feet or so maybe, in order to get that lateral movement. Now, if golf weren't so precision bound if you didn't have to keep your center so much you could probably move your foot and hit the ball but it you won't see or you have never seen anyone physically move the left foot like that in a golf swing so what that achieves for him is it achieves a large amount of lateral movement and at the same time look at the back swing so this is what I try to teach when I I get people who have bad sequence and throw the club at the ball and, and lack sort of any any energy delivered from the separation of upper and lower. You know, you'll you'll use a a drill which allows for the moving of that foot, or I'll have people hop off the mat and I'll ask them how they got there. And usually, you know, eventually it'll be okay. I pushed off my right foot. Well, that's what I see here, although in baseball that stride makes it a lot easier. See, in golf, from here you have to be more conscious of how you're going to drive your, your legs over when you push onto the outside of that left foot. And that's another little area of concern is, is being able to get that left foot to take the stress. So some people, if you ever hurt your ankle or something, you might want to look at the way you drive your legs because if you're keeping your ankles locked, either one of them, you're not going to be able to move your hips the way you well, the way you would like to. So watch the stride. The shoulders, they don't they don't rotate until about right here. Well, look where the bat is from here to there. That's a back swing, that's a forward swing, and that's the sequence that we want. So he's, what he's doing now is, is he's building up pressure and stress in these muscles in his side. And now the unwind is just huge. So look at the right leg action. If you look at Garrigus' action here, and then you look at Bonds, look at that. It's like the same thing. Boom. A lot of baseball players, to take pressure off the left arm, just let go. But, you know, Bonds' finish looked a little different because he didn't let go with his left hand. But still, look at the left foot. See, it? it's going to pivot over just like a golf swing. And then he's going to go so far around, it's just going to come right up on the heel. Bang. Now, if you look at... Uh, so, so here's... So here's Garrigus. Now this is in the long drive where he was going up against uh, 
Sidlowski and Dustin Johnson and uh, Bubba Watson. So, if you watch, look at the width of his stance. This is why he wants to hit it as far as he can. <laughs> look at this move. Isn't that awesome? Now, again, he's already lowered. He lowers a little bit more here, and then it's all up. See the thrust up. Now, here's what I was talking about with this late, later release than you would normally see. So, look at the, the shaft in front of his left arm there. And there's the, there's the extension. So, past the ball, you can see the, the line of, of compression there. And look at the, look at the thrust of the hips. Now, if we if we look at his if we look at his action in a, in a in a sort of a normal sense, we can see that he has way more control than just a than just a bomber. So we've got. I'm on a par three here. Now again, I wish the guys at the Golf Channel, if anyone's listening, holding one of these cameras, see this is the, that's the target line, there's the flag. So if you're standing there with the camera, just slide over about two feet and get behind his hands and then we can get a little better, a little better angle. So if anyone's listening. So what you'll see here is... And again, this isn't perfect because of the angle, but I'll draw it anyway. Um, hands are going to go a little bit away from the body. The club's going to roll out a bit. And from there, the club, halfway up, it's pretty much right on plane, maybe just a fraction vertical. Now, th this is where it starts to look like Graham McDowell without the laid-off shaft position. The left wrist, again, is pretty flat. And there's a trend going on here if you look at the way the players are coming up with these wrist angles. So this is the, the third guy that I can immediately think of, McDowell and Dustin Johnson, with that shut left wrist. And here's another guy who comes out to hit the ball. So instead of searching down for the approach on the shaft plane, what he's going to do now look at the lowering too, so big time here. So I keep showing you that these guys are winning tons of money. And again, it's just another point. If, if dipping was bad, <laughs> they wouldn't be doing so well. So here's a here's a high forearm position, right? But look at what saves it. The hips are back in the box. The upper body is super open. The eyes are looking at the target. Now, when he finishes up, he doesn't really drive back and stay in the box. He'll come, he'll stand up a little bit. But still, that's pretty cool. If you look at this and compare that approach to Graham McDowell, you'll see it's almost identical. And again, one of the things that you'll notice again is the sick angle from the shoulder into the waist so you know I put normal people in these positions and they feel like their nose is stuck down into the dirt somewhere okay but now remember the footwork on the driver well, look at the footwork on the iron and this is not a short shot here so well actually it was this is only this is a probably a nine iron or something so real quiet footwork and that allows the swing to be much more precise. So a little unconventional, you know, the club goes away from him, rolls open, the head goes to the right a little bit, but then after that, pretty cool stuff. All right, hope you enjoyed that. Make sure you look at the website, waynedfrancesco.com. All right.